and it looks like it's going and things are roughly <clears throat> correct. Work on the contacts, you know the sequence for the contacts, and you get that approximately correct. Before you get it fine-tuned, let's torque this down now. <clears throat> so we go to our torque wrench, put it in here. Now, by the way, I'm having a little trouble here with the torque wrench because these teeth are forcing me to put this at an incorrect angle. So I'm putting it off to the side so that I can get it down there and feel it completely seated. If that, if I was not able to do that because of the patient's cheek, I would need a longer hex driver to, to bring me up over the top. I don't see a longer hex driver. Oh, here's my longer hex driver. Push through. Okay, so let's say the cheek prevents me from doing that and I'm not able to get that in here. Putting this longer hex driver in. And there we go. Alright, so we're going to torque it down. So I'm tightening it. It's no longer turning. I'm feeling the pressure building. I'm keeping it pressed down. And boom, it breaks. All right. It's important to do that because that torquing will seat it a little bit more than you will do by hand, which in turn will make the crown seat down a little bit more. And so when you adjust your bite, you'll, you'll have a correct bite. All right, so you adjust your contacts. Feel the contacts are okay. Before you adjust the top of the crown, take a new x-ray and verify that that junction between the crown and the the crown and the abutment are tight. If they're not tight, there could be something holding it up. It could be the contacts or it could be the tissue. We don't have the model of the tissue around here, but the tissue could have grown and swollen and and just be different from what the laboratory had to work with. If that's true, when you put it in, you will see blanching in the tissue. It'll be really white here as you push it down. And it may bounce up. You push it down, you let go, it comes up. That's a good sign of tissue contact. If that's the case, you need to use a little bit of cinch paste, put it around the outside of the crown and seat it down, and that will show you where it's pressing. And then you can make some little adjustments to hollow these areas out and to get it to seat. Now we're not talking about the interior surface, we're talking about adjusting it over here on the porcelain, in the area below the contact. Can you see this, Danielle? Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the contact. We're not going to adjust that. We're not going to adjust the margins of the crown, but it's this area here where there could be some tissue contact. Take your green stone and hollow grind that out to duplicate the shape of the tissue until you get it so that it's comfortable. And the patients will tell you too, oh that hurts when you push down there. And if you see blanching and it's hurting and bouncing, you've got tissue contact. If it looks like it's really severe, get the doctor. Maybe we have to numb the patient up and do some tissue contouring with a laser. Okay, <clears throat> so you've adjusted the tissue contacts, you've adjusted your tooth contacts and you've taken an x-ray and your crown is fully seated. Only then should you start adjusting the occlusion because until that point you don't know that this is down all the way. There's no point in adjusting the bite if the crown is jacked up because of the tissue like this. So you get it down, do your normal occlusal adjustments and then uh, when the patient's comfortable with it and of course you check the color and, and approved it with the, the color with the patient, polish it up, get the doctor and we'll seat it. Now the steps for seating it are, it needs to be torqued two more times. You've torqued it once, it needs to be torqued a second time. So you put it back in, make sure the hex is totally engaged, holding it down firmly, pushing until it breaks and no more. Do not keep pushing it, you will break something. This only works until the moment that that break occurs. Take it out, snap it, do it again. It may seem dumb to do this again. You thought, well, you know, shoot, I did it once. Why do I have to do it again? But the screw stretches as you do this. 
and between times it stretches it relaxes. The biggest problem with implant crowns, or the biggest danger, is that that screw will loosen up. If the screw loosens up, it will start to wobble back and forth. That wobbling will cause the screw to break internally and taking, getting a broken screw out of an implant is very difficult. So we don't want that to happen. If, I have, if a patient comes in with a wobbly crown with a loose screw, my first, my first thing I'm going to try to do is to remove this crown, which if we've placed it with temporary cement, hopefully we can do. It's not even so easy with Tempon, but hopefully we'll at least have a chance if it's in with something weak. But if it's in something strong and that screw is loose, I have to go back in there and drill a hole through this, try to find that screw and tighten it up again and repair the crown. That's never a fun day. Our best defense against that is to be sure that this is properly seated in the right orientation, that it's torqued down three times to the proper 32 Newton centimeters torque wrench, and, um, and that has given us very few problems when we follow all those steps. All right, so we've torqued it down three times. Now you're going to place into this hole two things. You're going to place a tiny bit of cotton and a tiny bit of wax. You need enough cotton packed in here so that it is in the hex threads, the, the hex head of the screw. So I'm just packing it in here. Now you may have, depending upon the crown, if this is a tall crown, this hole may be very deep. You can pack quite a bit of cotton in there. But you need to at least pack enough cotton that all the places that this hex would have engaged are, are packed. On top of that, you're going to place a little bit of wax and you're going to make it flush. So a plastic instrument will allow you to pack that in here, take off the excess. and you're ready to go. Now the reason we do that is that we don't want cement to get into this so that if I do remove the crown, uh, if I've got some hard cement in here, I have to drill this out. If I have to drill it out and it's down into the head of the screw, I still can't loosen this thing. At that point I kill whoever didn't put that in there. But of course it's my fault for cementing a crown without looking to see if this is on here. So you need the wax to prevent, <clears throat> to prevent the cement from getting into the threads. You could, if you just put, if you just put some cotton in here, it sort of keeps the cement out, but the cotton becomes impregnated with the cement and becomes essentially a block of cement too. So the two layers allow us to easily get back in there and get some clean threads without wax in it and without cement in it. Okay, so we've got those two layers, pretend they're still there. We're going to cement it. Now when you cement a, a crown, you don't put as much cement as you do on a normal tube. I'm not trying to get a perfect seal with this because I'm not worried about sensitivity on a natural tube. I'm not worried about decay. I am worried about a huge mass of cement squishing out the bottom of the crown and getting down under the gums where it's difficult to clean out. Sometimes these junctions between the abutment and the crown are down a little further below the gum line than, than the typical crown on a natural tooth. So cleaning this out is difficult. <clears throat> so we want to put enough cement to hold a light coating primarily around the margins, but don't fill the whole thing up with cement. It will make our lives difficult. So <clears throat> put it on here, of course have the patient bite down um, on cotton, and if it's tampon we could do our cleanup pretty much instantaneously. And that's it. Any questions? No. <laughs> well, Danielle is speaking for everyone who will be watching this video in the future, so <laughs> we can be sure that there will be no questions ever. If you have questions, rewind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Danielle, that's good.